You miss, you know what I mean? Good afternoon. Welcome to the January 17th, 2023 Finance Committee meeting. Uh, please, I ask the public to and staff to meet your devices unless you need them, unless they need to speak on an item. Also, the public and staff turn off cell phones and off to vibrate. If you uh, to make public comment, please, if available, use the raise hand function and approach the podium on other locations. Uh, please clearly identify yourself for staff reports and public comments. and. This no additional business will be dis discussed following the completion of agenda. Clerk, first item. Number 17, ordinance third reading. Amending ordinance number 4455, defining the terms and conditions of employment for sworn officers of the Cheyenne Police Department for fiscal year 2022 to 2023 by updating the department's pay plan schedule as specified in Exhibit B, relevant to cost of living adjustments for city employees. We have a staff report. Thank you, Captain. Morning. Wish uh, the, the one that has a face on it. All right. Red. Good morning. Captain David Jane, Cheyenne Police Department. Uh, all this does is, is it brings up our, our pay scale to match the resolution that was passed uh, already by council. So, any questions from committee for uh, Captain? Okay. Any public comment? Public comment? Okay, hearing none, we have a motion. Second. So a motion and a second. Any comments or from questions from committee? Comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, next item, please. Number 24, resolution, declining the community development block grant CDBG entitlement grant between the city of Cheyenne and the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD. Okay, we have a staff report. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I was just at the legislature and it turns green. So I was looking at it thinking, oh, it's off. Mr. Mayor, could you identify yourself? Please? I'm the <laughs> Patrick Collins, Mayor of Cheyenne. Um, we had a long conversation last time we were here and we spent a lot of time talking about this uh, during our meeting on, uh, on last Monday night. So I don't wanna belabor those points, but I do wanna say that it is still staff's recommendation that we pass this resolution as it's written. Um, some of the ideas that came up were maybe we ought to use these dollars for city purposes. And uh, I love that idea. But the reality is, is we have exactly the same requirements that uh, our nonprofits would have when they want to use these dollars. So we have the same problems with the David Davis Bacon Act. We have the same problems with having higher people of very low income to work on projects that are above $200,000. All of the challenges that go with CDBG, uh, we would have exactly the same ones for ourselves. And so I would, um, I would urge your support for staff and for this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or comments from committee? Dr. Aldridge. Uh, Chairman Wiggle, through you. So, I I um, believe that we are the Davis Bacon Act applies to all grants that we receive uh, for the city, regard and not just this CDBG grant. Is that correct? Mr. Chairman, you'd have to uh, maybe ask our grants coordinator, but I believe that federal dollars have a tie to Davis Bacon. Okay. Is that correct? I also um, believe that if um, we are the subrecipient of this that we would still carry liability while it might be less um, in the event that we are nonprofits in our community wanted to apply to WCDA for funding. 
um, which has been one of the suggestions that they might go to WCDA if this funding was not available, um, that uh, we would still be the subrecipient and therefore we would still have um, liability. Is that correct? Renee Smith, grants manager. That is correct. The, the difference is for financially, HUD would go to the state for reimbursement, yeah. and then it would be up to the state to then, I, I she was not able to tell me like between our area, Colorado, Wyoming, if, if the states had gone back to recoup funds if, if grant projects were deemed ineligible, but yes. It is, I got this too. Uh, is it also true that uh, we take that risk with any federal grants that we have that the, at some point in time, if it was deemed that we had spent the money in air, that they could, uh, quote unquote, claw back their funds? Um, that is correct. I think the requirements are what are different. CDBG requirements are different than what our, some of our other federal grant requirements are. And if we uh, recommended to our community nonprofits in our community that they use uh, the WCDA route, and if this funding were to go away, um, we my understanding is that as the city, we would be the subrecipient, and there would be, still be staff time involved in selecting the two nonprofit applications that would go forward, and then in that process of being the subrecipient, but we wouldn't be able to claim any of the administrative cost from that grant. Um, how would we cover that staff cost if we were then to just directly direct those nonprofits to apply to WCDA? Okay, uh, through you, just a couple of things to clarify. So our nonprofits cannot apply directly to WCDA. So what we have talked about, kind of brainstorming what this would look like if we wanted to do, say, a, a low-income housing package. And so we would reach out to Kumea Needs Safe House. We would put together a project that kind of meets all of those needs. That would be the project we would submit. So kind of similar with all of the other grants that I help write, that would fall into that same, I would write that grant. Uh, so it would be my staff time, not CDBG staff time. Okay. And then as a follow-up, um, what about... I know that we've talked about these mortgages for $800,000, 30 mortgages, I believe, through what were called hand grants, which was evidently at one point a HUD program. Um, I'm just wondering, I don't, I don't know that by eliminating, I think they're, I'm wondering if we put things in place, my understanding is that grant's not even available currently right now, or we're not utilizing it, I guess I should say. Um, so the idea that we would find ourselves in a situation similar with mortgage problems moving forward is um, relatively slim because we're no longer participating in that grant. So I'm not sure how eliminating this rendition of the CDBG would actually um, help us to um, remedy past wrongs, if that makes sense, or past errors or past you know, money issues. Currently, what we're trying to do is is clean up the books from these past ones, but you're correct. We are not anticipating going that route. We've changed our process for using contracts. So it's a legal contract for the organizations that were sub who are our sub recipients because they cannot sell their property for a period of five years. There, there are limitations when they accept money from us, you know, from HUD through us. Uh, we are just opting not to do the mortgages. If we were to go back, say, sorry, it is, is it totally echoing? echoing. Um, to doing the, um, say if we wanted to do the home program. So as an entitlement city, we select which programs we want to um, use from HUD. We returned all of those mainly because we weren't getting the applicants. And some of it had to do with the low, low interest rates. It wasn't worth it for them to take it. We would take a mortgage on their property when they can get a super low interest rate to do the same work. So we weren't getting the applications. And so we got rid of those programs. I haven't looked too much into going back to the home program and seeing how it aligns with sort of our affordable housing you know, trajectory that we're trying to accomplish going forward to see 
would we be required? I don't know. Maybe Deanne has an answer. I don't know, but it, would we were required to go back to doing the mortgages? They are still doing them on a national level. I would like to do anything we can not to. I, I just don't believe that that is a good, good look for us to have mortgages on our neighbors. So. And then my last question is, I looked at the maps that you sent out, and these are the low to moderate income maps, I believe is what it was titled on the email that we received. And I noticed that, I, I guess I was under the impression that we didn't have a lot of these areas. And I found that there are areas in all, all three wards, ward one, two, and three have these uh, special areas in their wards. And I also, I, you had made a statement at the last um, committee meeting that um, maybe we had hit a saturation point of projects in these areas. But when I look at our community, I see a lot of areas that might benefit from these types of uh, funds. Um, and I, I know that another comment had been made that $40,000 or $30,000 wasn't a ton of money. I mean, in the scope of the dollars that you deal with, obviously that's not a lot of money, but I think that for a lot of our nonprofits, that's vital to their existence. So um, I really appreciate your work on this. And um, I um, will have a resolution that is at the city attorney's office right now to present on Monday night regarding this issue. But um, for today, thanks for your answers. Could I speak to that for just a minute, though, about the areas? And and uh, do you mind? No, I'll be brief. quick. I'll be brief. Uh, yes, there are areas in yellow. Yes, they are in all three wards. What are issues? What we're finding is from a project standpoint, we were even, Dan and I talking about maybe these annexed areas, is there a way we could use CDBG funds for roads? Well, if we did that, the entire project would have to fall under that section three, the environmental, they would have to go through an entire environmental survey for the whole project. Anything over uh, $200,000 then applies to all of these, uh, actually it's $2,000 you know, for Davis-Bacon, 200 for section three. Um, the requirements are, are what is making it challenging. It's not that there aren't areas that we could do things. We're just really limited. If you look at that $200,000 benchmark or even the funds that we have, how can you use the money we have to, you really can't even partner with some of our contracting agencies because it throws them way over the threshold. And, and that is what has become the challenge. It's not that it's not there, it's we're having trouble spending these dollars. And I think even with, as an example, you know, the six applications that we received, we had a couple more come through before then, they were disqualified because they don't meet HUD requirements. The six that we have, there's a chance that a couple of those will not qualify either. So we're left with $350,000 we can't spend because we're not getting the projects that that meet the eligibility requirements. That's the challenge. The money's there, the projects aren't. Thank you. Any other questions from committee? Councilman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Renee, then we decline the grant and then HUD changes the requirements and let's, makes it less stringent for you then we decide to get back in. It's a it's arduous of a process. Like it's two years before we actually are completely done with this grant. So do we have to wait another two years if we decide to get back in it? So for us to decline these funds, it really is after the after a resolution, if it's passed, it's a letter to HUD saying we respectively decline to opt back in. It's another letter saying, please, we'd like to come back. That was the process that was explained to us. It, it's, it's fairly simple. So it would be in their next cycle because what happens when we decline, our entitlement money, money goes into the national pot. When we wanna come back in, we wait till that next cycle opens, we become basically contenders of that pot. Okay, thank you. Dr. Aldrich. Uh, that just prompted another question in my mind, Renee. Um, right now, we enjoy, I use that term loosely, we enjoy being an entitlement city. Um, and that was established, I believe, back in 1975. Um, I'm just curious as to whether we would still qualify as an entitlement city or if the qualifications have changed since that point um, 
And what you say we could come back in, could we come back in as an entitlement city or is there some other designation we would have to come in under? Uh, it's based on population. So we would still maintain entitlement status in that same, in that same role. It, it literally is based on population. Thank you. Any further questions from committee? Okay, public comment. Hello, um, my name is Amy Speaker. I'm the director of um, the executive director of the Laramie County Community Partnership. Thanks so much for having me today. And thanks to Renee and her team for all the work she's done on this process. I know that HUD funds and other funds can be quite arduous to work with. Um, I just wanted to speak that I think that the, I still have some concerns for our nonprofit community um, around access to affordable housing dollars. Um, specifically around the process of how the city will support um, the applications to WCDA, what kind of um, availability funds will be at the state level as we begin to compete with other communities across the state and the limited number of projects that we're able um, to submit. I know um, Renee just testified that we were able to kind of create a conglomerate uh, type application, but I specifically asked that question when I talked to WCDA and they said that that was not allowed. I don't mean to to cause confusion, but that was um, the notes that I took when I discussed with them that it would have to be by project. Um, and so I think that would potentially limit our ability to submit nonprofit applications uh, from our community. Um, and I think that those are my main concerns. I, I, again, I don't know that it's wrong necessarily that in the future that this may not be something that we wanna go uh, forward with not taking, but I think that I still just have a lot of questions about the process and how we move forward and would really like um, some more time to consider. So thank you so much for your time and all the work that's been done. Thanks. For the public comment. Nope, I had, it's got to turn red. Is it again? There's the right button. There we go. Okay. okay. So I'm Erin LeBlanc, the Director of Senior Programs at the Laramie County Senior Center. Thank you for allowing um, this to resonate um, for the last week for more discussion, consideration, and conversation. Um, I believe coming here, I have a little, little quick page um, because I think your recommendation to the City Council on Monday night goes a long way. So I'm here to hopefully provide a little bit of influence. Prior to moving to Cheyenne, I was a long-term care ombudsman in Colorado, and we were the boots on the ground for the state. Ombudsmen are advocates for those that live in long-term care. We encouraged nursing homes to work with us on our level, rather than having the state come in and conduct a, a, an investigation that could identify deficiencies, which could result in possible fines. We had quite a bit of influence with the state. We were definitely the uh, but however, the state was definitely the bite behind the teeth. We as ombudsmen saw the day-to-day -day operations of nursing homes and knew whether that nursing home was really trying, really to want to make things better or different. Our investigations and suggestions were seriously considered by the state because we were there all the time. I feel a very close similarity between the scenario um, with this one and the one um, that you've had with Renee coming forward to provide you all with the reasons to decline the continuation of CDBG funding. Yes, there are restrictions. Yes, there is a possibility of repayment that could be um, invoked, which we all agree is alarming. And, um, and yes, she has the ability and the opportunity to influence you because of her working with the day-to-day -day mechanicals of it. I'm not saying that that is wrong. However, um, a week ago, you had the opportunity to listen to five people come to the podium. There were um, three of us that gave personal um, stories about how the CDBG funding has helped us in the community. You had an actual committee member come forward that had been on that committee for many years, as well as, as Amy who um, stepped forward. Um, who better to know um, what we need in Cheyenne than those of us that work here, live here, and do business here? And I think because we are the community's um, boots on the ground. 
Accepting funds from the feds is challenging. HUD is challenging. However, I do believe that because Cheyenne is um, focusing on affordable housing, we will continue to work with HUD. And why would we decline to work with community development block grants? The answer is we wouldn't and we shouldn't. The last several years have been challenging to say the least. The entire nation has been impacted because of the pandemic. Now that we are on the road to recovery, it's not the time to turn away funding. It's the time to embrace it. I ask for your consideration to report to city council to decline, um, to vote no on declining the community development block grant funds for the city of Cheyenne. Um, they are very needed for us to continue um, our nonprofits here. Thank you. Thank you. Further public comment. Good afternoon, Dan Dorsch, Executive Director for Habitat for Humanity of Laramie County. Um, I'd just like to express some of the same concerns uh, that Ms. Speaker mentioned. Uh, vital funding for nonprofits may be lost. Um, I do understand the city side of things as well, so it's kind of a tricky issue. I really do that. But as uh, an entity that receives CDBG funding for vital repairs, for home repairs to keep people safe in their home, um, we may lose that funding if through if we go through the WCDA or we'd have to pursue it other other places. Um, and I would also urge that if if the city does move forward with declining the entitlement status to look for other funding in other ways before that entitlement status goes away, per, perhaps a seventh penny tax for affordable housing or uh, county real estate housing trust funds. I know you're the city, but in conjunction with the county, you could look at some of those other funding options. So um, that's all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any further public comment? Public comment? Hearing none, we have a motion. Mr. Chair, I move to adopt. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. So I have a motion to second. Uh, any questions or comments from committee? Dr. Aldridge. <laughs> Mr. Chairman Roybal, um, you know, when this was first, uh, the initial uh, idea was uh, first discussed about giving up the CDBG grant funds. I think that um, I was in favor of that as a, a member of the CDBG uh, committee and understood the reasoning behind it. However, the more we've delved into this, the more questions have arisen and the more uncertainty has followed. And so, um, I seconded the motion today because other, there's just two of us. <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't have gotten to vote. But I, I'm going to be voting no. Um, I don't believe that at this point in time, without more research and more time, that we should decline the CDBG grant. So, Councilman Escobel. Mr. Chair, through you, I was a little bit on the opposite end of that spectrum when I first saw it. I just was very confused um, at the reasonings. And uh, it, it's a very hard decision, you know. You have to take into account the time that it takes our staff away from applying for other grants. And, you know, they're constrained. So I, I, I tend to lean a lot on uh, those recommendations when I hear what staff is going through. And, and that's why I'm, I'm going to be a yes. Okay. No further comments or questions, committee. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Those opposed? No. Okay. There'll be no recommendation from the finance committee on this item. Clerk, next item. Number 26, resolution approving water and sanitary sewer services by outside user water and sanitary sewer service agreements for UMC Properties LLC for North Range Business Park, third filing, lot two, block nine, Laramie County, Wyoming. Okay, maybe a staff report, please. Yes, Frank Strong, uh, Engineering Manager of the Cheyenne Board of Public Utilities. Uh, this resolution is to allow the board to enter into an outside user agreement with UMC for the development of a facility in the North Range Business Park. I'll be here to answer any questions you might have. Any questions from committee? Dr. Aldridge. Chairman Roybal. Um, Mr. Strong, I'm just curious. I know that over the last several months, we've looked at several outside user agreements or one or two, not not several, but one or two. And there was discussion about um, coming up with some sort of a um, 
process, if you will, and some sort of, and, and making sure that we're really um, charging a significant, or not a significant, but a sufficient amount to recover those um, resources, those natural resources. And I'm just wondering, I, I was under the impression that there was a committee that was being formed to take a look at outside user agreements. And I'm just wondering if that indeed has happened and if that committee has looked at this particular outside user agreement. Um, through you, sir. Um, that committee has started to meet to discuss about how we want the outside user agreement process to work in the future and start to figure out those evaluation criteria. In this case, this is merely to service some restrooms and a break area for a manufacturing facility. So it's a very small demand on our system. And there's already an established uh, water and wastewater system present in North Range Business Park. And that's why we're moving forward with this one or recommending moving forward with this one. Uh, but the committee needs a little more time. Okay, any further questions from the committee? Okay, thank you, Frank. Okay, public comment. Thank you. Public comment. Uh, Chairman, Council Members, Brad Emmons, AVI, we're uh, helping UMC Technology move forward with this outside users agreement. Um, I just want to give a little more background for the council members that this is a firm that was brought in by uh, Cheyenne Leeds uh, to purchase the property there. Uh, they manufacture uh, fencing and also manufacture the components for people to manufacture fence other places. So it, it actually is a dual purpose facility when it gets up and running. So be happy to answer any questions the council has on the any project. Any questions from committee? No? Thank you, Brad. Okay. Any further public comment? Public comment? Hearing none, may I have a motion? All right, so move. Second. So the motion is second. Uh, any comments or co questions from committee? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Number 28A, Memorandum of Understanding between the City of Cheyenne, Cheyenne Police Department, and the City of Laramie, Laramie Police Department for law enforcement extraterritorial assistance. Okay, we have a staff report. Good afternoon, Stephanie Boster, Cheyenne City Attorney. Uh, what you have before you, I believe, is a proposed substitute to what was before the council on Monday. Last Monday, uh, that substitute was brought about by comments made by Dr. Aldridge and Mayor Collins. I've sent the substitute to the city of Laramie and I haven't had any um, input from them, although I do anticipate they'll sign it. What the substitute does is clean up what used to be paragraph four and five and make it align with state statute, which is 72106. That statute requires an MOU between two jurisdictions. Uh, so ideally, that statute, the uh, MOU note follows the statute directly. Um, and I would ask for your consideration and approval of the substitute. I'm open for questions. Any questions from committee? Questions from committee? Okay, thank you. Any further public comment? Public comment? Okay, hearing none, I have a motion. I would move to approve. Mr. Chairman, I move to amend by substitute dated January 17th, 2023. So I have a motion on a substitute. So any public comment on the substitute? Public comment? Hearing then anything from committee? Dr. Alden. Chairman Roybal, I just wanted to say thank you to Stephanie for your research into this and for making sure that we have the best uh, MOU that we can have going forward. Okay, any further comments or questions on the substitute? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, opposed? Okay, we're back on the main motion. Any further comments from the committee on the main motion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify aye. by saying aye. 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 Okay, are those opposed? Okay. Number 28F, professional services agreement between the City of Cheyenne and AVI Professional Corporation for the Story Boulevard Extension Project Design and Bidding Construction Services Project. Staff report, please. Good afternoon, Chairman Roybal and members of the Finance Committee, Tom Cobb, City Engineer. Before you and your consideration is a professional services agreement between the City of Cheyenne and AVI PC for the design and construction bidding services of the Story Boulevard extension. 
Um, this design will be for Story, Story Boulevard from College to Highland Drive, and it'll primarily be used for at the at the present time for detours for two of the Dell Range projects that are currently programmed. One, of course, is the developer in front of his action of Whitney Fourth, and then of course the longer one is is the city's program piece from basically Van Buren to College and college to story. So again, primarily in the first portion of this, we look at this as a detour route, but eventually it will be a connection that will be built uh, and finished by the developer himself. Um, the drainage for these two components, the first, all the on-site drainage that will be for this particular design package will be done with Whitney Ranch itself will be ABI themselves. All the off-site drainage will be taken care of by Civil Works in a separate contract. You'll see that moving forward. Uh, the total amount is caught, start to exceed of $175,747.50, and we're looking at the 2019 to 22 1% specific sales tax fifth penny. And then also, we, not to small regard, I'm working on an MOU between the county and ourselves because there is a county portion of roadway in this that is included in the design portion. But before we go to construction, we, we'd have the county participate in that share. And with that, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Any questions from committee? Dr. Aldridge. Chairman Webble, I know you're surprised. Um, the county share, I just no, want to, I just want to make sure when you say that uh, before the start of the project that we would um, be working with the county and uh, for their share, are you talking about a financial share? Or are you talking about an MOU to allow us access? I'm just curious. Chairman Orville, for you to Dr. Aldridge. Dr. Aldridge, I'm looking at a, 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 a financial share from the county. Okay. Any further questions for Engineer Cobb? No? Uh, any public comment? Public comment? Hearing none, may I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I would move to approve an amount not to exceed $175,747.50. Okay. Second. A motion is second. Any comments or questions from committee? Comments or questions? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, next item. Number 28G, professional services agreement between the City of Cheyenne, Cheyenne Metropolitan Planning Organization, MPO, and Benchmark Engineers PC for the Southwest Drive Corridor Plan. Okay, staff report, please. Good afternoon. I'm Jenny Stevens, a senior transportation planner with the Cheyenne MPO. The Cheyenne MPO is requesting the approval of the professional services contract for Southwest Drive Corridor Plan. This contract is for benchmark engineers, the selected consultant, to provide engineering analysis and public engagement for the recommendation of improvements of Southwest Drive from Lincoln Way to College Drive for a total contract not to exceed $116,480. The funding split for these dollars include 90.49% of federal funds and the remaining 9.51% being split between the city and the county with the city portion coming from the fifth penny. So I'm here for any questions. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the committee? Questions from the committee? Thank you. Any public comment? Public comment? Okay, hearing none, we have a motion. I would move to approve an amount not to exceed $116,480. So I have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions from committee? Comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Number 28I, several word agreement between the City of Cheyenne, Cheyenne Fire Fire Rescue and the Memorial Hospital of Laramie County to provide grant funded community para, paramedicine services. Staff report, please. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Andrew Dykstorn, uh, Division Chief of Operations for Cheyenne Fire Rescue. Um, the sub-award grant agreement before you is for Cheyenne Fire Rescue to begin the planning and implementation of community emergency medical services for the city of Cheyenne. Uh, this sub-award grant amount is for a total of $198,000 with uh, no match and is a pass-through from the state. Um, this grant allows Cheyenne Fire Rescue to purchase items, complete training, and focus on building our community EMS program. Uh, community EMS is not a new concept, um, but it is for our region and our city for sure. Um, the Affordable Care Act began a movement to decrease costs associated with healthcare and create direct access for patients. 
Um, since 1990, our personnel uh, from Cheyenne Fire Rescue have responded to basic and advanced life support EMS incidents. Uh, through those responses, we find our citizens that need help with further medical treatment and care than an acute situation often allows. A community EMS program intentionally focuses on specific patient populations, and through referrals and partnership with CRMC, we will be able to address in-home health needs, health education, physical assessment, and referral to proper services for even mental health. Um, I have witnessed the current administration and this legislative body have the courage to work through challenges facing our community, um, such as housing, homelessness, mental health, poverty, hunger, and health care. Uh, this program will allow us to begin creating positive momentum in, in these some of these areas and creating a better quality of life for patients and our citizens. Uh, I thank you for your consideration and acceptance of this agreement, and I would be happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? Dr. Aldrich. Chairman Roybal. Um, Andrew, I'm just curious. So this, is, this concept is new to our community. We haven't been doing this previously, is my understanding. I'm just wondering, because I know that um, we, we've really, oh, I mean, we continue to ask a lot of our emergency responders and we increase the area, area that they're expected to cover um, with the development that we're doing. Um, do we have the manpower, in your opinion, to fulfill our obligation under this MOU? Uh, currently, yes, I do believe we do. Um, we had a trial run, I guess, during the cold snap. We actually put a non-emergent vehicle in place. Um, it took about 20 calls off the system so that our fire trucks weren't out when it was 50 below. Um, the staffing was on, on duty that day and, and willing to help and step up and took some of those non-emergent calls off the system. So um, fast forward to this partnership is where we would have one staff member from each um, shift with another staff member from CRMC going to these referrals, doing these home health care needs, um, telemedicine, et cetera. Um, secondly, I will say because of the uh, Affordable Care Act, we are able to backfill Medicare and private insurance for these in-home health visits to help offset some of these costs that we're incurring. Um, this grant before you really just provides some of the infrastructure to buy equipment and um, some of the, 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 the needs, the training is already underway for six of our members. Um, they've already put time and effort into three classes, basically, through a college out of Minnesota, um, which was also another scholarship through the state. So that that money was not uh, from the from the city itself for our training as well. So. Would the equipment include a vehicle that would be um, a non-emergency vehicle um, so that we wouldn't be putting the mileage on our city fire trucks and things like that? Yeah, correct. We we currently have a vehicle ready to go. Um, it just needs to be outfitted a little bit to accommodate some of the equipment that they're going to be carrying. Um, they have to carry, you know, some scales, some other um, point of testing equipment that our normal engines do not carry um, and some different monitors and stuff. And, and the ability to do telehealth brings a, a little bit different infrastructure as well. So um, we do have a, an expedition or a, a Jeep Liberty that is ready to go to be outfitted for this. And would this work hand in hand with the other MOU that we just signed with the University of Wyoming and uh, Dr. Claire White? Is this part of, I mean, is this kind of a part of that package or is this completely stand up, standalone? Yes. Yeah, so um, we we did kind of a, a pause on that to, to include Cheyenne Fire Rescue for some of that reason. Um, community EMS covers multiple pillars from homeless outreach to in-home health needs. Um, to mental health and co-response, just as, as the police had put forward. So, um, yes, this could be a, a pillar to assist them and have that medical insight on scene, as well as the, the case or social worker and the, the law enforcement official. Any further questions for comments for, from committee? No? Okay, any public comment? Public comment? Okay, hearing none, may I have a motion? I would move to approve in an amount not to exceed $198,000. So I have a motion and a second. Uh, any comments or questions from committee? Dr. Aldridge. Chairman Webel, I just wanted to say thank you for, again, uh, leading. I think Cheyenne really does set the standard and model um, what's up and coming in, in these emergency response situations. And um, I think it's something that our community can be really proud of, that um, we're taking a proactive approach to this rather than reactive. So thank you for your hard work. Okay. Any further comments or questions? Hearing none, may I, have, I already get a motion, right? Okay. 
Hearing that, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Okay, opposed? Okay. Number 29B, consideration of bid number S-8-23 for an agreement between the City of Cheyenne and Cheney Landscaping Incorporated for the Cheyenne Cemetery's Irrigation System Replacement Project. Okay, staff report, please. Mr. Chair, Jason Sanchez, Community Rec and Events. Um, if you recall, about four or five months ago, I was before the committee to ask for support for the design of the irrigation system uh, for the cemetery. We completed the design, and now this bid is for the installation of the cemetery irrigation system. This was a six-penny project that was approved by the voters. Um, I'm happy to say that with uh, TJ's help, the Robin Lockman, and the mayor's support, we've been able to move this project through relatively quick, keeping the cost down, and so we are under budget at the moment. Any questions from committee? Dr. Oliver? I am mean, just, just curious, um, Jason, when we looked at, when we started talking about this design, I don't know that we were talking as much about uh, water conservation as we are now. And I'm just curious as to whether this design will be more water efficient in our cemeteries um, or if we're going to be using about the same amount. Mr. Chair, through you. Uh, so we're replacing a 50 year old system that has multiple breaks, multiple leaks. So automatically we should be using less water. In this design, we are including uh, moisture sensors to put throughout the cemetery so that we can monitor the, the moisture and water when needed. Um, and so I can't give you an exact uh, number of gallons that we'll save, but I anticipate a significant amount of savings. Okay, any further questions from committee? Chairman or Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Through you and then Jason, well, the new systems are more accurate as far as the areas that they're they're going to cover. So we're not watering Pershing Boulevard anymore. Mr. Chair, through you, that's the goal. The hard part is that um, oftentimes the wind is blowing, and so we'll, we'll put parameters in there that if the wind exceeds a certain mile per hour in a certain direction, those heads would shut down, and then we would resume watering when the thresholds were under uh, when the wind speed was under the threshold, uh, but that is always our intent. Uh, but living in Cheyenne, often the wind does blow and cause a little drifting. <laughs> Dr. Aldridge. I just had one more question for you, Jason. As we look at this map that you included in our packet, does the design uh, take into account um, any, I know that there's been talk about Greenway and things like that. Does that take into account uh, future use for Greenway or would we have to go back and rebuild or redesign the system, if you will, for any uh, occurrence of uh, Greenway through there? Mr. Chair, through you, the design is what we currently have in place. So if we were to add irrigation or uh, Greenway, in the cemetery at that point, we would have to address zones or heads that would need to be deleted or change from full turn to part turn. Uh, so we would approach that as, as the need arose. Any further questions for Jason? Okay, thank you, Jason. Public comment. Or to begin with, I'm not a member of the public. I'm a member of the council. And I'm here to learn about these projects. Mr. Layborn, could you identify yourself as a member yes, of the council? So good. Uh, I'm Peter Layborn. Thank you. 515 East 25th Street, Cheyenne, Wyoming. And uh, I have a couple of questions for Mr. Sanchez. Okay, if you'll address them to the chair, then we'll work from there. Well, I'm curious if... Uh, the emphasis we have now on uh, turf as exists throughout the cemetery is one that uh, are we going to have any sort of changes in the uh, planting of the turf that is to be uh, maintained as a part of perpetual care, which I believe is our responsibility. So are we going to be they're using the same mixes that we uh, do now. And your second question? I'm very interested in the 
matter of the trees. Um, that cemetery has really suffered over the past few years with insects and um, removal of trees. And it, I believe it's really impacted the appearance of that uh, cemetery. So I'm very interested what replacements we're gonna have of the trees. And I'm also, uh, Mr. Chairman, curious about uh, the recycled water. Um, that was an issue uh, with some of the trees in the past. And I know that that mix is one that uh, the Board of Public Utilities is going to be looking at. So those are my questions. Okay. And at this point, we're uh, we're voting on a uh, irrigation system. So I think that perhaps we should bring those questions up on Monday night in other business. And I'm sure he'll have the answers for you at that point. I see. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comment? Public comment? Okay, hearing none, may I have a uh, motion? I would move to approve an amount or from the bid from Cheney Landscaping of Pinedale, Wyoming in an amount not to exceed $2,068,800. Okay. So the motion is second. Any comments or questions from the committee? Mr. Chair. Councilman. When the comment was made about the, the recycled water being used, sometimes we talk about purple pipe, and we talk about gray water, those two are the same or those different? Mr. Chair, Jason Sanchez, Community Reckoning Events. So we are currently using effluent water to irrigate at the cemetery. We are using effluent, so the purple pipe, we're using that type of water to irrigate the cemetery. So <clears throat> that be non-potable water or? That is correct. So the term of gray water, is the city currently sending some of that outside the city limits downstream? Are you familiar with all with that? Mr. Chair, I don't think I would be the appropriate person to answer. I think that would be something from BOPU. And I, I think that would be something along the same lines as uh, Councilman Laborn's questions. We're voting on a, uh, a landscaping system, not a... So we can ask that another other other quiz or other comments. Okay. Okay. So any further comments or questions from the committee? Comments or questions? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Being as there's no further business to come in front of this uh, the finance committee, we are adjourned.